Hey guys, my name is Lily and today I want to show you this solar system that I've just finished building using 12 volt batteries like before and a 1500 watts inverter. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so this is my new service cut and originally the metal frame cost like only 35 euros and all of the boards and the plexiglass all together maybe 80 euros. So now in total this, this thing here costs me between maybe 125 and 135 euros and yeah, that's what I have built. Um, so far also I have reinforced the bottom underneath the service card with a couple of boards so that um, this is not bending through and I also and also I have built a floor for the batteries so they don't sit on the cold metal then here we have some air ventilation at both sides that the inside is not getting too hot. I got this piece of plexiglass. This is maybe a little bit of luxury, but I think it's great if you can just uh, look inside to see what's going on. All right, for the first part, I want to install a 12 volt inverter, which also has 1500 watts. So this one has a surge power of 3000 watts. Uh, it's a pure sine wave inverter. I think I will place it up here in the corner. So then I still have a lot of space for other things. Okay, I have installed the inverter and now for the AC side I'm going to install this box right here and this is where the RCD is going to be installed. Alright guys, and this is the solar charge controller that I'm going to use for my project. It's a 40 amps um, solar charge controller by the company EP Ever and yeah it's the biggest one of those models usually you would um, attach a solar panel of 520 watts if you are using the 12 volt like me but you can also over panel this solar charge controller so the maximum um, photovoltaic array power you can attach is 1550 watts so that's really cool and I really like this device here. Okay, next I need a fuse holder. I think I'm going to place it right here. Alright guys, so next I want to install a thermal circuit breaker for my solar charge controller. And this can be reused many many times. It's a thermal circuit protector and this has 50 amps. So how can you calculate how big your circuit breaker needs to be? So first of all you need to find out how many amps your solar charge controller is delivering. So in my case that's 40 amps uh, and then you multiply it by 25%. So you add 25% and then you get 50 amps. Alright, so now that we have installed an inverter, a solar charge controller, a fuse holder and a thermal breaker, we can finally start with the first wiring, but first we need to find out how much amperage is flowing 
over our wires and how thick our wires need to be. So my um, inverter has 1500 watts and I'm building a 12 volt solar system. So at 1500 watts it's going to draw 125 amps and that's quite a lot. So first we have to find out what kind of wire we are going to use for our system. And for wire sizing one of the most popular charts is this one here and it will show you exactly how thick the wire is going to have to be at a certain amperage and at a certain length. So let's see 125. So here we have 120 amps. Now because I'm here in Europe we don't have um, gauge wire sizes Instead we have the metric size, so let's check what's that in metric. So 2 gauge is about 35 square millimeters. Now the thing is, it's not exactly that because it's a little bit bigger than 2 gauge. Okay, so this is the American chart, but actually in Austria I have to adhere to this chart here because uh, we have maybe, I don't know, stricter local laws. So I, I always check this chart which is uh, made for Austrian electricians and this chart is telling me what kind of fuse or breaker maximum I can use with a certain um, square millimeter size of wire. And first you need to check how the wire is installed. Um, if the wire is inside of a wall then it's much differently than if it's outside of a wall because outside it's cooler and it can give off more heat and then also it depends how many strands that you have and so on. In my case the cable is in the air or maybe touching one wall so we have a really good um, cooling of the cable. So now let's check this column. Um, unfortunately the wire size only goes up to 35 square millimeters so let's check that 35. So the highest size of fuse that I can use with this wire is 125 amps. So yeah that's the maximum that I can use and now we come back to our calculation. Uh, the problem is that this inverter it has much more potential and actually it can for short periods of time deliver a little bit more than 125 amps. So if we use the 35 square millimeter cable then we lose some of its potential that the inverter can really um, yeah, perform. So the next wire size that I could use, the next bigger one, is the 50 square millimeter cable. Then I also could use a higher size of fuse. So let's say for example we have our 125 amps times 1.25 then we get 156 amps. So then I could use, let's say, a 150 amps fuse for my 50 square millimeter cable. So now I have two options. I just have to um, consider cost as well because the thicker cable is going to be even more expensive. But um, as luck would have it, I happen to have a 50 square millimeter cable at home and I want to use it for this project. Now unfortunately this table ends here so I do not know what the 50 square millimeter cable what size of fuse I can use here but I guess it's the next bigger one which is 150 amps. Okay so this is my 50 square millimeter wire and you can see it's really sturdy it's hard to work with and bend but I think it will be fine. All right so now I want to start putting on lugs onto my cable. All right, here we go. Okay, for crimping I'm using a hammer crimper by the company Draper. Let's check it out. Okay, that looks really good. Now let's put on the 
second lug but first we have to determine the direction of the lug so it should be like this that's the second crimp I don't like this kind of washer that came with the inverter so instead of that I first am going to insert the cable then I'm using a regular washer a split ring and a nut okay and this is how I'm going to set up the wires inside of the fuse holder so first I put on two washers Then here I got a 150 amps bolt on fuse and then the wire, then another set of washers, uh, split rings again and then the nut. Okay, that's looking really good. None of the insulation is touching, um, is coming in between the two metals here, so we have a good connection. All right. Okay, honestly, I was really worried if I get around this corner and yeah, it worked. So I'm really happy. I think that maybe this was the hardest wire to set and now we can move on to connecting the breaker to the um, solar charge controller so um, if we read the signs here these two terminals are for the solar panels this is for the battery and then here we have another load terminal I'm not sure if I want to use this yet but for the thermal breaker which is going to connect to the battery we are going to have to connect it to the positive side of the battery terminal so we go from here to here uh, let's check our chart again so if we if we would take a 40 amps um, cable that would be 8 gauge 8 gauge is 10 square millimeters but honestly I want to go a little bit thicker because I have the next thickness at home which is 16 square millimeters or 6 gauge and that would be good for 50 amps I'm definitely going to size my wire a little bit bigger than probably necessary uh, but this will only increase the efficiency of my solar system okay here we got a 16 square millimeters cable and that's the one that I want to use and also I want to use it together with these things here and this will keep the wires together and then it's easier to go inside of the solar charge controller Nice. Alright, so next I want to install this battery switch. It's rated uh, up to 48 volts and 275 amps. And actually it's pretty cheap, cost me like 15 bucks or so. So yeah, pretty awesome switch and I think I'm going to place it right here. Uh, I cannot move it any lower because this is where the batteries are going to be. So I think that this is going to be a good spot. made myself a battery cable and this is going to go on the other side right here
Yeah, so this switch sits really tight. <sighs> nice. All right, guys, so now we have attached this really thick battery cable to the switch. And um, the next step would be that I want to add another fuse uh, to this cable. And I'm going to use this fuse here. This is a 175 amps fuse. It's just a little bit bigger than this one. Uh, and this is going to protect the batteries from a short. Okay, I found a screw which is perfect, but it's too long, so I have to cut it off. All right, and this is how I assemble the fuse. So first I take my bolt, then a washer, then I attach it to the lug, then I directly attach the fuse, then comes another washer, a split ring or a lock washer, and then the nut. Okay, next I want to insulate this uh, contact here. Okay, next I want to start labeling all of the cables so that we don't forget what size of cables we used for this project. Okay, next I want to make an attachment uh, from the breaker of the solar charge controller to the switch and I want to stay after the switch so that if I turn off the switch that both the inverter but also the solar charge controller is disconnected from the batteries. And I've just found an old wire that I want to attach to the back side of the switch here and then we are going to go to this bolt. Yeah, if you want to, you can use some cable clamps, but these wires, they are super tight. So they're not really bending in any direction. All right, next I want to install a breaker for the solar panels. And the best breaker for solar panels is actually a DC breaker, which um, can turn off both the positive but also the negative wire. And apparently in many states and countries uh, this is mandatory to use. Now here I have two breakers. This one is 10 amps and this one is 16 amps. But which one should I take? Well, it really depends on the strength of your solar panel. So now we need to uh, look into the manual of the solar panel and we got a 410 watt solar panel and the maximum amperage that it produces is 13.6 amperes. So this breaker here is too small because it only can handle 10 amps. But here I have a 16 amp breaker and this should be fine for our solar panel. Now this is if we only use one panel, but um, if we use two panels, for example in parallel, then it might happen that we need to switch out this breaker with an even stronger one because um, with this uh, solar charge controller we can also over panel and that would make sense for example in winter time when you don't have a lot of sun you just connect two solar panels and then potentially you could get over 16 amps so then this uh, breaker would trip and if you are connecting two solar panels you then would have to um, increase the size of the breaker but for now we are only going to use one solar panel and connect it to our solar system and then the 16 amp breaker should be fine. Okay, now that we have uh, discussed the size of the breaker, now I want to tell you that these kind of breakers, they are great because they are really, really cheap. But the downside is that um, if you connect them in a wrong way, they will start to burn. And there are many videos on YouTube on burning breakers like these. So make sure that the wiring is correct. So now I'm going to wire my DC breaker exactly like the YouTuber Explorers Live do the self campers. And he has made a great video on how you properly should wire breakers like this. So um, he's coming down with the wires from the solar panels and connects it to here. 
to the top of the breaker and then here these two connections they lead to the solar charge controller okay and then also i have ordered some of these really nice boxes they are really neat and small but they are not here yet so for now i'm just going to temporarily set this up but later on i definitely want to put this into this nice uh, small box which is yeah preventing you from accidentally reaching into here and also you want to use some ferrules for the wires because if you stick in the wires uh, like that they can come out and that happened to me pretty often so ferrules are really important okay so now i have to do a little bit of planning um, i want to use this xt90 connector for the outside here this is where the uh, solar cables are going to get attached to uh, then also i want to use this thing here this is a 12 volt system and I directly want to connect it to the load of the MPPT solar charge controller. Um, yeah, this doesn't need a lot of amps, so it's fine if we connect it to here. If the XT90 comes out here somewhere, the breaker should be around here. I think that's pretty good. Okay, now let's check out this chart here again, um, what size of wire we need if we connect to our solar panels. So we already know that the amperage from the solar panels is 13.6. So if we take 15 amperes here, this column, and let's say the solar panels are 4 to 6 meters away, then we need a 10 gauge cable. 10 gauge is 6 square millimeters. But internally I want to take an even bigger wire. So inside of my solar system, I want to use 10 square millimeters, which is the next bigger size or 8 gauge. And 8 gauge is good for up to 40 amps uh, at a very short distance. So up to 3 meters, it can deliver 40 amps. And that would be great if I connect two solar panels. So if I decide to connect two solar panels one day, then the internal connection would be good if it's a little bit thicker and in this case it could transport 40 amps but also now i want to solder this xt90 connector and i have to check if the 10 square millimeter cable fits into here okay i just checked and uh, 10 square millimeters seems to fit the xt90 connector perfectly so unfortunately this is all of the 10 square millimeter wire that i have at home uh, it's going to be enough to make the internal connections but from then onwards, I'm going to take a six square millimeter wire. Okay, so I finally have soldered one side of the XT90 connector. I have to say it was not so easy. I even had to use my vise um, and yeah I had to push down the wire into the hole but now it's fine and it seems to be a solid connection
see if we got this right. Negative is here, positive is here. And yes, guys, I'm still missing my box for this breaker. So for now, I'm going to improvise and let it hang in the air. But of course, this is not um, according to any code. Okay, nice. All right, so now we have connected the positive and negative cable to the solar charge controller where it says solar panel. And this goes into our breaker and this goes into the XD90 connector. And all of these cables are 10 square millimeters. And here we got the adapter for the outside. So if I want to plug in some solar panels, I just do it like so. And here I have my MC4 connectors. So yeah, pretty easy. I like it. Next, I would like to install an MT50. This is a screen for my solar charge controller. Yeah, I'm going to mount it right here. Okay guys, so I've mounted the MT50 uh, screen. I'm missing two screws here, so next time I go to the hardware store I will get some and this is how it looks from the inside and now it's time to connect the wire to the solar charge controller and also I want to complete the 12 volt system here okay here we have the fuse So now it's time to wire the RCD and breakers for the 230 volt side of the inverter. And um, for that I'm going to take this cable here, which I'm going to plug into the inverter and then I'm going to lead it into this box. And now for uh, demonstration purposes I'm going to take out the box again, because it's easier to work with when I have it on my workbench. So yeah, uh, I think uh, a lot of people forget using breakers after the inverter. Uh, and that's fine if you're just using devices which are double insulated and don't need a ground. But if you want to use fridges and freezers, anything that needs to be grounded, then we need to install some RCDs and breakers after the inverter. All right, so this is the box uh, that I've just taken out of my card. And here I have an RCD. This is um, a 25 amps RCD. And then also I want to use this breaker. And this is a B16 breaker. All right, so because the IT network of the inverter does not give out the ground, I don't need the um, earth wire here, so I just insulated it off and uh, basically I'm just working with the neutral interface. Okay, now I want to use these Vago clamps and they can clamp both um, one strand wire but also really fine wire. You just open up the clamp and insert the wire and then close it again. Now the blue wire, which is the neutral, uh, goes into the right hole of the RCD and it comes out down here. Uh, but with other brands, for example, um, Schneider, I believe it's the other way around. Now I'm going to insert the face into the RCD. 
Okay, once again, uh, it's a little bit tricky to see, but the face or the live wire was connected to the left side here, and the blue one, the blue wire or the neutral, is connected to the right side of the RCD. So the neutral comes in here and goes out here, and now for the uh, live wire, we need to create a bridge going into here into the breaker and then from here we are going to go down uh, to the socket. Okay, usually, so when you have a ground, uh, this is how you wire, uh, this is one example how you can wire the RCT. The problem is we don't have a ground, so the RCT is not going to work like this. So what we have to do now is we have to make a TN network out of the IT network that the inverter is giving us. And you can create that network by inserting the ground up here. All right, so this ground we did not use coming from the inverter. So I just tuck it away under here. And now we have inserted this wire into the same hole as the neutral, which is the blue wire. Now, before you do something like this, uh, you have to find out if this is uh, according to code in your country. Um, I have this idea from this German YouTuber. Uh, he's called Proofwood. And here he's showing the problematic with the IT networks coming from the EcoFlow power station. So it doesn't matter if it's an EcoFlow or just a normal inverter that I'm using. The network that is coming out of here is always IT. And here is his uh, wiring. He has used a different RCD where the neutral is at the left side. So here you can see that he is um, yeah, inserting the neutral, the blue wire, into the RCD. And then adding a ground wire into the same hole. And at the other side it's going to look like this. And now if you test this RCD... Um, it's going to work. So it's going to save your life in case, uh, yeah, you get electrocuted. So basically what the RCD is doing, it's um, comparing uh, both the face and the neutral and uh, it's seeing if there's a difference between the flow of electrons. If there's a difference, then probably a person has touched a wire and is getting electrocuted. But in order to make this work, the RCD is only working if you also have a earth wire. Because without that, it's not going to work and it's not going to save your life. Now, here we have made a bridge coming from the face to the breaker. That's the breaker. This is going to um, protect the wires from burning. So, yeah, here you only need the face. Okay, so now we have the earth, the neutral and the face and this is what we are going to connect to our small um, socket here so i'm leaving the earth wire a little bit longer so in case that the socket gets ripped out of the card uh, this should be the wire that is on the socket the longest okay i'm just taking a look at my socket and it looks like as if i have to use some ferrules Okay, next I want to connect the MT50 with the solar charger. Okay, and I also want to use a battery monitor. All right, so now it's time for the batteries. And I'm going to use this battery here by the company Renogy. It's a lithium iron phosphate battery with 100 amp hours. And I have two of these and I'm going to connect them in parallel.
Okay, so now first I'm going to connect the positives with each other. And I really like these batteries because uh, you can mount the cables on top here, okay? All right, and as you can see, I'm going to connect the batteries in parallel. And that's the only configuration that I can connect these two because um, connecting them in a series is not allowed. So if you want to get 24 volts, then you have to get different batteries. But yeah, I'm a fan of 12 volts, so I'm going to use 12 volt batteries. Okay, next I want to install my shunt. And this is going to go on the negative side of the battery. And I will try to mount it onto the wall. Okay, now I need to buy the shunt. And this is going to go on the negative um, of the battery, but also here a positive cable connects, which is then going to lead um, to the positive terminal of the battery. Alright, so now I need to connect the data cable from the battery monitor to the shunt. And last but not least, I would like to um, yeah, install this thermometer and this goes into the solar charge controller. Okay, now we need to connect the negative pole of the battery to the solar charge controller. Now let's turn on my solar system. Here we go. Okay, the monitor says the battery has 13.3 volts. All right, and the MT50 is also working. Now let's try the 12 volt system. Oh gosh. Okay, this is not working. Okay guys, everything is fine. I just had to press this button here, which is going to switch on the solar charge controller. And now the 12 volt system is working as well. And now I want to test the RCD. Okay, that's what I want to see. Okay, now really important, I want to find out if my wiring is working. So this is a RCD tester. And right now it's telling me that uh, life and neutral is in reverse. Um, so I could rewire that, but I don't think that's so important. More importantly, I want to find out if um, my RCD is working. So now it says that the wiring is correct if I insert it the other way. And now let's press this button and this will make a failure and then the RCD should break. All right. Okay, I don't know if you heard it, but the RCD um, yeah, was breaking. So it's going to work and it's going to save your life. Okay, I'm going to test it again. Nice. And this is why you should have an RCD tester. And this way you can find out if your um, life-saving device is really working or not. So this only costs a couple of bucks on Amazon. So it's really worth uh, checking your sockets. Okay guys, that was a freaking awesome build. I think it's the best thing I've ever built. But look at this mess here. My tool shop looks like uh, yeah, an elephant walked through. So now I have to clean up this mess. And tomorrow we are going to try out if the solar is working too. Alright, I want to conduct one more stress test before I end the video. Also, I want to measure the temperature at all of the cables and all of the connections. Okay, now we are drawing 100 amps. The system is working and it should be working. So my system just passed the stress test, it's working, 
the RCD is working, which is the most important thing. And yeah, I gotta say, I'm really happy with this solar station. The only thing is that today it's really cloudy and I cannot try out um, the solar charge controller. But I will do that next time. Alright guys, so this is it. This is my new 12 volt system and I think it's really, really awesome. I think it's by far the best that I've ever built so far when it comes to solar systems. Also, I would really emphasize that you look into Renergy batteries. They are really awesome batteries. Um, they are going to last you almost a lifetime if you take care of them. So the most important thing is that you check the voltage and you never want to discharge them below 20%. And if you do that, they will last you 20 years. No problem. Yeah, pretty awesome batteries. I will leave the link in the description below. And before I end the video, I want to show you the app as well. Okay, so here you can see the app which connects right to the batteries. So here we can see one of the two batteries. I'm not sure which one it is. And it says it has a charge of 57% right now. And it also tells you the voltage and even the temperature. So that's really awesome that you can use Bluetooth and connect to your smartphone. Okay guys, so this is it. I really want to thank you guys for watching and if you want to see more solar builds then make sure that you are subscribing to my channel.